Thank you so much. Okay, we're on. Um, my name's Cindy Griffith. I've been very lucky and honored to be a part of ARE since we moved here a little bit over a year ago. And um, we do this as a part, the ideals lecture as part of the survey lecture. But today it's going to be an extended version. Now you all have notes uh, in your packet. You're not going to need those till the very, till uh, maybe the middle or the very end. Um, but just so you know, you've got, you've got uh, notes. If anyone would like a, and this goes for live streaming as well, if anybody would like a PDF version of the um, presentation today of the slides, I'm more than happy to do so. For those of you that are here, you can uh, simply sign up on my mailing list and write PDF at the end. The mailing list is over by the front door, by the entrance where you came in. Or if you're live streamed, um, you just need to email me at cindytaro at me.com. So let's get started. One of the reasons I chose to work with ideals was because Peter Woodbury said I couldn't do a survey lecture on uh, the birth of the soul. So he said, well, what else are you passionate about? And I said, well, I like ideals. I like ideals because you can actually do something with it. It's just not knowledge for the sake of knowledge. And, and today we have so much in our heads going on. I want to fill your heads with something you can actually use. So I said, I want to do ideals. That's why I I've called this talk Ideals Tools for Living because I hope by the time you uh, either sign off today if you're on live stream or you leave today that you can say, I'm going to start working with those ideals. I can see where that will be a benefit in my life. But for the meantime, let me just give you a little insight into Edgar Casey. Most of you that are either watching or, or here today probably already know quite a bit about Edgar, so I'm going to tell you what excites me. One of the things that I like about Edgar Casey is I think he's probably like when I was a kid, my mother later on told me, well, Cindy, you were a strange child. And I imagine that's probably what Edgar's pa parents said about him. He was psychic from the day, from the beginning. He was able to see those that had passed on. He was able to see elementals. He was a very religious child. Even as a child at a very young age, adolescence, he said, I want to read the Bible for every year that I'm alive. And so he had to read the Bible 10 or 11 times through. With it. it took him about uh, two years, but he read the Bible through for every time he'd already lived. And then after that, every year he read the Bible one time through. Once he was done reading the Bible through as a kid, an angel appeared to him and said, Edgar, I've heard your prayers. They saw this reading the Bible as his prayers. I've heard your prayers. What do you want? Now, if I'm an adolescent, I want the biggest roll of licorice that is in the world, or maybe at that age I wanted rollerblades or something like that. And he said, going along with the strange child, he said, I want to help people. I want to help them heal. And so the angel said, your wishes have been heard. You know, so it will be. And he thought he was going to be a preacher. But God had other things in mind for him. And what he was able to do over the years was to offer these readings. Now, what Edgar would do, what Casey would do, is he would lie, and everybody that you read, they all say the same thing. He would lay down on the couch, loosen his collar, loosen his shoes, and he would go into a trance. And it was a very deep trance that he would go into, not like a hypnotic trance. It was very, very deep. And from that, he would access the Akashic Records or the collective unconscious. There's different ways to look at it. And he would bring forth information. Now, in the beginning, it was for healing. In the beginning, it was for healing. And one of the fabulous things I really respect, Casey, is he says, I don't, he says, I'm not quite sure about this stuff. You know, I'm not quite sure where this is coming from. But if ever this creates a problem, if ever something happens negative out of my readings, I'll never do it again. If you want to know more about how Casey uh, became comfortable with his gift, you can read There is a River. And as a matter of fact, if you're not a member yet, you can get it for free with membership. So uh, in, in, in There is a River, it tells more about it. But so as, this, as his life progressed, he ended up doing over 14,000 of these readings. But at one point, someone asked him, where did this illness start? And in his trance state, he said, well, in a past life, blah, blah, blah. And then can you imagine his face, this very good 
religious Christian man coming up and reading his transcript because he was a trance channel. He didn't remember anything. Reading this transcript that started talking about reincarnation. Well, there was an excellent article in the uh, Venture Inward recently, uh, the little supplement. I don't know if you guys get that, but it was a little paper supplement comes in the mail about how he came to terms with reincarnation. And I highly recommend, if you're wondering the same thing, that you uh, go to, I think it was one or two of those little supplements before they had an article. The librarian upstairs could help you or someone at the front desk. But anyway, he came to terms with it, and that was the beginning of the life readings. That was in the ni around 1924. And he did, as you can see, um, over 2,500 of these life readings about reincarnation, past lives, and all of that good stuff. But throughout the readings, one of the things that became a common thread was this idea of ideals. And so let's learn what that is. Casey uh, said that the most important thing was to first know what your spiritual ideal is. Now, I will tell you, I am not going to read all of my slides because I think that makes for a very boring presentation. But the reason I bring this up is I want you to see these numbers. These numbers, whenever you see numbers in a parenthesis after one of uh, the Casey quotes, what that's telling you is who had the reading, the first numbers before the dash, and how many what number the reading had been. So number 357 was either a person or a group. They had, at that point, had 13 readings, and it was in the 13th reading that this quote came about. Now, why would you want to know that? Well, one, you can check up on us and make sure we're doing our research for real, and I just found one that was not real. I think it was a typo, but um, I went to go find it, and it wasn't, the quote wasn't in that reading. But anyway, um, it gives you, you can find out the context. Like, what was the person's question that would make them, you know, that would make him have that response? So I think that it's really helpful, again, to, if you see a quote and you want to know what's the story behind that, just grab that number in between the parentheses. And if you're a member, you can go online and enter that number and the reading will pop up. We have so many wonderful membership um, advantages. But if not, if you take that to the librarian upstairs, she'll help you. Okay, so you can check up on me by keeping track of those numbers. So what are ideals? I think of ideals as your motivating pattern, your highest values that guide your life. How do they work? Let me show you. If we have an ideal, let's say our ideal, I have patience written here. So let's say our ideal though is kindness. And let me give you an example. I was working, I, kindness is the ideal I'm currently working on. It's what I consider a motivating pattern. I want, guy, I want kindness to motivate me in my life. And so I get a phone call from a client. I actually got a text, and she said, where are you? It's time for our appointment. And I was driving back from New York, so I knew there was no way I made an appointment. But I make mistakes, checked my calendar, her appointment's for tomorrow. I said, your appointment's for tomorrow. She goes, oh, no, no, and you can tell she's aggravated in the text, because I don't know, when you're psychic, you can pick up all that stuff. And, and she says, no, 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 it's today. You made the mistake, and I, I knew I didn't make a mistake. But I thought, how do I, respond, how do I respond if kindness is my ideal? How do I carry the energy of kindness in this conversation? So what I did is I didn't say, I'm right, darn it, because speaking my truth wasn't my ideal at the moment. If speaking my truth was my ideal, I might have had a different response, but it wasn't, kindness was. And so I said, well, uh, you know, I'm so sorry, but I'm in the car, so how about tomorrow? So we made our appointment for tomorrow, and when I was continuing with my kindness, if it was the, the pre-kindness Cindy, I would have said, you know, I checked, and I, here's the email, and I was right, you know, but that's, I'm working on kindness. So what happens is I take my ideal, which is kindness at the time, it affected the choices I made, how I responded. And so when we called, I just ignored it, and I said, how are you today, right? And that affected the result. I didn't start with a, pa a client who was defensive Right? So when we can put our ideals into action, they affect our choices, and then they change our life. They change the result. They, they create a different result. So let me give you an example of how this works. My family, we were raised with ideals of 
hard work and community service. She, my sister married a man and her family, ide his ideals were family and creative expression. So the kids were raised with four basic, I four, not four, four basic ideas, ideals. Hard work, community service, family, and creative expression. It's time for my nephew to go to college. And he's going to be a civil, uh, mechanical engineer, an engineer like his mom. And so he travels all over the country to look for a, co for a college. And he ends up going to the one that's five minutes from his house. What ideal do you think that was highest in his priority? Family. Family. So he didn't know uh, an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old isn't going to say, oh, what's my ideal? What ideal should I follow? But you, we're automatic. We don't even know we're working under ideals, right? But the ideal of family was so strong, he decided to stay close to home. But when it came time for him to go to, to, go to work, now he still was raised with those ideals, family, creative expression, hard work, community service, and he had two choices. He got two job offers. One job offer was to be with his friends, making a lot of money, and my nephew likes the money, making a lot of money, but it was kind of a job that was just a job, you know? Then he had another choice, not so much money, but he would be doing research, but he'd have to move. He'd have to move away. So when he went looking, the ideals now creative expression within his research, and doing something, community service, because he was researching actually for the military to create safety on out overseas bases. As a matter of fact, he's, he's out overseas right now, so we'll all say a little prayer for him. So he then, his ideal shifted a little bit, and the priority of family, still important, but creative expression, and he ended up taking the research job. So we use our ideals. Now, think about it. If we consciously were using our ideals to make choices and make decisions, how much more powerful would that be? And how much angst would it have saved my nephew? At the time, I wasn't doing this talk yet, so I tried to help him, but I, didn't, I wasn't able to use ideals. So when we can use these ideals to make our choices and change the results in our life, our highest and most ultimate values, we can take control of our life and have our life be guided by the, these principles and patterns that are our choice, not knee-jerk reaction. Now, an ideal is, an ha is a how, not a what. Now, what does that mean? Ideals are how we interact with our world, not what we do. It's not the actions we take, it's how we do it. And so one of the things that I say uh, quite frequently when I'm teaching this uh, survey lecture, because this is also a survey lecture you can come to, um, is an ideal won't solve your problem. An ideal isn't to fix your problem. It may help you make better choices, but it's not to fix your problem. An ideal is to say, what energy, what vibration, what values do you want to bring to the situation? I had a gentleman just yesterday, I was, I was doing the survey lecture, and he had come to the survey lecture before, and the previous time we had talked about his dad, and his dad was a tough nut. We'll leave it at that, right? Tough nut. And so we talked about, we can't fix your dad. You know, he's, I think he's 90-something. I don't know. You can't fix your dad. But what we can do is we can help you shift the energy that you bring to that situation. And so we talked quite a bit about his dad uh, at the first time. So he came, and after the lecture yesterday, he says, you know, my relationship with my dad has totally shifted. It's not a problem anymore. My dad's still my dad, but I am not having that same energy when I interact with him, and so it's not a problem. So what an ideal does is it helps us to choose the energy or the vibration we bring to the problem, right? So... How we use an ideal is going to differ in different parts of your life. So let's say I'm using kindness at work. Well, kindness at work may mean that when I use the last paper in the paper in the copier, I put more paper in. Maybe that's how I use kindness at work. Now, kindness at home 
and my husband's here and he'll laugh at me. But m one of my few jobs at home is to do the dishes. He cooks, he's fabulous. But anyway, he cooks. I mean, one of my, well, somehow I have decided to ignore the fact that the pots and pans belong to the dishes. Like they don't fit in the dishwasher, so they don't qualify, right? So, but if I'm using my ideal of kindness at home, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make sure that I wash the pots and pans. Now you know I'm gonna have to wash the pots and pans tonight. So how we might deal with kindness in family may be different. How we might deal with kindness in personal growth might be different. Now we think of how we bring the ideals into the world. How do we, how do we become, and we're going to see, uh, Casey had these, these uh, fruits of the spirit, which were the highest ideals you could have. How do we bring these ideals into the world? That's what we're thinking, right? But what about personal, whoops, wrong button. What about personal growth? One of the things that I have found doing this talk a number of times is that we most often forget to bring these ideals to ourself. So if we're going to be kind to others, what have we done to be kind to ourselves today? Right? If we're going to be non-judging to others, how, when are we going to stop judging ourselves? If we're going to bring hope to others, how are we working to bring hope to ourselves? So we're going to look at not only how we outwardly use ideals, but also how we use them inwardly. So an ideal, basically, I like to think of it as a guiding light, a northern star, what we can use for ourselves to know how we're going to have our behavior. I also feel it's a motivating influence. It motivated me uh, not to uh, be not to be insistent with my client that she was wrong, right? It motivated me to take the high road. But it's also like a, a, a best friend, a supportive energy. You know, uh, a best friend will say, I don't think you should text drunk. I, I just don't think that's a good idea. Or maybe, you know, maybe you should think twice before you tell your family member off. You know, maybe you really want to look at, is that the energy you want to bring to family? So to me, it's a friend who helps us make better choices, better decisions. And then also, of course, it helps us to see when we've messed up, right? And I'll have a funny story about that later. Now, how does it work? We already did our little gear diagram, but let me go through it. Another thing you'll hear from, from uh, the Casey readings very often is spirit is the life, mind is the builder, physical is the result. And you say, oh yes, that's so wise. But then if you ask someone to explain it, a lot of times you just get a look. Well, you know it's wise, but I can't explain it. Well, let me give you a very simple way to explain it. I'm going to give you two different ways. Spirit, you can think of as the potentiality when you wake up in the morning. You have the potentiality of your whole day. It can be a good day, it can be a bad day, it can be a neutral day, but it is potentiality. And that, to me, is kind of how we can look at spirit. It's the potentiality. And then your mind gets involved. And maybe your mate stole all the covers or your cat slipped right in the middle and you got a really lousy sleep and so your mind is in grouchy mode so now your mind is going to take that potentiality that beautiful pure undifferentiated potentiality and is going to form it into cranky day right mind is going to build that potentiality now and then physical is the result. You're going to have a cranky day. Your focus is going to be on everything negative. Now, remember I told you I'm really spoiled, right? So my morning starts with a cup of coffee and a kiss on the nose. That's my morning start. And so my mind is going to have the opportunity. It doesn't always work. We're not perfect. But my mind is going to have the, the opportunity to create or mold that potentiality into a beautiful day, into a loving day. Like I said, we're, per we're not perfect. And Casey recognized that. He said that an ideal is something we strive for. We don't expect to get it perfect. And so my second way to explain this, my spirit is a life, mind is the bi builder, physical is the result, is cookie dough. I love cookies. So 
we, we do a lot of food analogies in my talks. So let's think of spirit as the cookie dough. You roll out the cookie dough, and then you say, mm, I've got my cookie cutters. Do I want this cookie to be a star? Do I want it to be a leaf? Do I want it to, I want it to be a gingerbread man. I want it to be a gingerbread man. So mind is the cookie cutter. So we have our cookie dough. We put our cookie cutter down, right? We've got our, we, we pick up our, our, our gingerbread man shape, and what do we do? How many of you have made gingerbread cookies? You take the spatula and all of a sudden the, the leg's bent, right? <laughs> you leave it in the oven too long, it's a little crispy, right? Well, in life, we have this phenomenal ideal we want to be kind, we want to be loving, we want to be hopeful, we want to be forgiving, we want to be uh, non-judgmental, we want to be all of these things. But life happens. Sometimes our leg gets a little bent. And Casey recognized that. He says, don't worry about being perfect. We're not trying to be perfect beings. We're trying to do our best. So an ideal is something we strive for. We don't expect to actually get there. So let's think about what ideals do you work with? I want you to think, now here it says perfect day. I keep meaning to change this, uh, but I had given this a couple weeks ago to Kevin, so I was not able to change it. What's your day look like? Like what is your average day? So you have pencil and paper there. I want you to write what are maybe five things that you do almost daily? Right? What are maybe five things that you do almost daily? What's your day like? Do you spend it alone? Do you spend it with other people? Do you sit in front of the TV or do you sit in front of the desk job, the job all day? Do you work to live or do you live to work? Let's just kind of, and you don't have to. You can do it in your head if you don't want to write it down. And you can use the back of the paper. I didn't make a form for this, but what's your day? So just take a moment to think about that. And if you're at home, you can do this at home. If you're listening to the live stream, get out your phone. Everybody has a phone and, and, and make some notes. So just give a, give a couple minutes. What's a, what's a typical day? What's a day, not what's the perfect day? Because the perfect day we'd be sitting on the beach drinking margaritas and it would not be 55 degrees. It would be 70, right? 75 although there's nothing wrong with self-care as part of your day. So then, look for the common threads. And, when you s and I'm going to give you an example, of course. It's going to be me, because it's all about me. I'm going to give you an example. But we'll look for a common thread, and that will give you the key to your ideal. So let me give you an example. Whoops. Remember I said it's a slow start. I am not a morning person. God bless. I am here and talking at 10 a.m. You don't even know what a miracle that is. So we so take a slow start. I, did get, I didn't get my cup of coffee this morning either, but I did get my kiss on the nose. And then usually I email and do my social networking. Now for me, most of that, once you get past the Macy's and the Penny's emails, you know, all those that you get all the time, most of that is um, putting out spiritual uh, inspiration on Facebook and Twitter. So my social networking is work-related. So that's my work. That's putting out uh, sharing knowledge, basically. Then have a nice lunch with my hubby. And then if I had my, per if I had my druthers, we would go explore someplace new. Does it always happen? No. But it's on my list of wants. We'd explore something new. And then teach a class, have a couple clients. I love teaching. I hope you can see that. So teach a class, have a couple clients. So that's basically my day. It may not be in this order. You know, sometimes we go out to dinner or I have clients in the afternoon. But this is basically my, my day. So what I did is I said, what are the common themes? Well, freedom is very strong. Now, freedom you could also label as self-care. You could also label it as uh, flexibility. And then social with loved ones. It's important to me. It's important to me. But Sharing knowledge is really important. Now, it's not necessarily family that I need to have share time with loved ones, but so when I look at it, the common themes, these are the common themes I come up with. So think about what common themes have you come up with? 
And then, of course, it's going to show your stumbling blocks. We're just going to ignore that. But then when we look at, when you look at the common themes, you really see your ideals. And I feel mine are service to others. Wonder where I got that from. Very often, you may not want to admit it, but you inherit some of your ideals. And then freedom. I think, or self-care might be another way to look at that. So when we look at what our day is, we can say, we can figure out what ideals are we currently acting under. Now, there's nothing wrong with providing my, for my family being one of my ideals, being consistent being one of my ideals. But then I want you to now think of, to say, what are my ideals that I want to strive for? Because what I have found is when we are thinking of what ideals we're acting under, very often they're kind of mundane, right? But when we start thinking of what ideals do we want to act on, uh, act under, they get a little more high and mighty. So I want you to think of either a perfect person, uh, they could be dead or alive, they could be Superman for all I care. But what are some of the characteristics that you really respect about a person? Just pick a person. It could be a spiritual figure, it could be people have done their parents, you know. Um, and just kind of write down what are some, maybe four, maybe four different attributes of a person that you really respect. Why do you respect them? Now, one of the things that Casey said was that unless you had shares, shared ideals in any sort of partnership, it doesn't have to be love partnership, it could be work partnership. When Casey was uh, <laughs> trying to find oil to uh, pay for the, the hospital, his ideal was to pay for the hospital. And the people that he was working with, their ideals was to make money and get rich. And their ideals didn't match. And so it's said that that's why he was never able to find oil because the group didn't have the matched ideals. But that's a little side story. So now, what I want you to do is you're already kind of grouped into people. Maybe if you don't have anybody near you, turn around or, or, or if, if you're part of a group. Let's group into just people. And I want you to talk about the ideals that you came up with. And I, because in order to be a group, you need to have shared ideals. And I want you to see if you, there's commonality, like would your little group make a good group? Do you have shared ideals? So first talk about your ideals and just take maybe about five minutes and group into, you know, three to five. And, and uh, if there's nobody sitting next to you, look around, somebody will take you into their group and just kind of talk about your ideals, why they're your ideals, and decide kind of is there a group ideal? Is there something that when you put all your ideals together, there's, there's kind of an overriding ideal that may govern your, or guide your little group? So just take a couple minutes, well maybe take five minutes or so to do that. So find some people to talk to, and if you see someone with no one to talk to, grab them into your group. Now, if you're doing this on the live feed, what you will do is just kind of look and, and take an idea of these ideals. Try to figure out what ideals are important to you, and you do that by looking at someone you respect. And we'll give you a couple minutes.
We'll give it another minute or two. So I want you to kind of think, in your group, is there an overriding ideal that may, or maybe two, you know, if you can't think of it, uh, is there one or two overriding ideals that you all kind of agreed on of saying, oh yes, that's so important. So let's get back into, um, I mean, you can stay in your groups if you want, but um, want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So. The group over here, I saw you guys. What was some of the what was some of the ideals that you came up with? Yep, yep, you guys. Kindness. Kindness. Kind and, and having the freedom to be kind and mm -hmm. not express yourself as lack of Okay. Uh, and so what are some of what are some of the figures that you use? Who are some of the people that you decided uh, that you were gonna role model after? Did you did, were they, was there anybody in particular that you role modeled, that you picked your uh, ideals from? Yourself. Yourself? Okay. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Let's all be friends with her. <laughs> okay, so what about the, the, the next group back? What were some of your ideals, or was there an overriding? Yeah. So self-care, self-love. Self yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And did a, any of you use anyone to, to pick your... No, that's a new thought. We, we oh, didn't I, didn't, I didn't put that out there. Okay. Put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what about, let's go back one more to the next, uh, next group. Oh. So we had, um, it was kindness. Okay. Uh, collectively. Okay. And did any of you, when you looked at your list in the beginning before you got together, did any of you have a figure or a, a person that you kind of based yours off of? I see a yes. What was yours? Your mom. Now, was she perfect all the time? No. No, no right? So we can have these ideals. We can practice these ideals, and we're not going to be perfect all the time. That is such an important point. What about over here? Or you two were, were chatting away. What about you guys? We enjoy helping others. Helping so others. So being of service. Absolutely. Okay, and Absolutely. anybody that you guys uh, picked for? for we you? didn't get that far. Okay. <laughs> Anyone you can think of? Yeah. Um, I, I've dealt with a whole lot of priests in my life, uh -huh. and there is one. One, uh, of the, one of the priests. Yeah, one of the priests who is significantly different than and the others. And he stood out, right? By f yeah. By yeah, far. By far, absolutely. By far. Yeah. I know that, that when I see someone walk in their talk, live in their ideals, they stand out. They absolutely stand out. It's as if they have a glow, and they're not perfect. So what about the next group? What about the group that we had uh, over here, the next row? Did you guys uh, come up with uh, some ideals? Self-care and, um, let's see, self-care and the so being social. Okay. Um, outwardly social. And outwardly so social. With, um, with fr friends and family. Friends and family. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important. It's important because, uh, you know, to be uh, uh, one ideal, you need the other, right? Yeah. What about this, the front ladies? You guys are having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you come up with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other people, you know, brought up other things. Uh, Self-care uh, seemed to be the foundation, and then inner peace was another one. Mm -hmm. But you have to have self-care in order to mm -hmm. find it. So see how they pr start to prioritize. 
When you get a bunch of them, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got so many, what am I gonna do? Well, one will start to prioritize. One will start raising to the top. And, and I heard one of you say, well, at this age, my, my ideals have shifted. They may be, or so, I think that's what she said, something a little different. So your ideals are going to change. I was doing this talk, and one woman goes, oh, thank goodness. Well, she said something else, but she, oh, thank goodness. I've been practicing the same ideal for 10 years. <laughs> I need a new one. She didn't know you could change. So your ideals are going to change, right? They're going to change. And I'm going to challenge you at the end. So who else did we miss over here? I think we had a couple, of, we had another group back there. We had a few of the same, um, caring for others and uh, learning or s getting together socially. Okay. So you'll notice, and this is one of the things I find as well, when groups come together, very often they automatically have shared ideals. Because if you had, if you had come, well, you wouldn't admit it, right? If your ideal was, let's get the most out of everything we can get and give the least, right? You probably wouldn't fit in with the group, right? There'd be clash of ideals. And remember I told you about my sister and her husband, uh, hard work, community service, family, and creative expression. The only time I see them have any struggle is when she's not, when she's so busy doing her community service and hard work that she's not home for the family dinner or for family time. The only time that marriage has a struggle is when those two ideals that normally go very well together clash. So next time you're having a struggle with a family member or non-family member, say, where might our ideals be clashing? And let's try to find where our ideals come together and know that that's where we're going to bond, not here, right? So. We, what I did was an ideal person, non-judging, honest, thoughtful, and kind. When you think of the highest possibility, highest possibility, your ideals come very clear. So now you all know what a list, you have a list of a couple at least, of ideals that you might like to strive for. Now, how do we use it when we're making a decision? Well, I think, what's my highest ideal of a perfect job? Let's say, for some reason, I had to get a day job. Perish the thought. But anyway, I had to get a day job. This would be my perfect job, my ideal job. It's even in our vocabulary. Supportive coworkers, service-oriented, financially rewarding, and my own schedule. Or remember, sometimes that cookie has a bent leg, right? So are we going to get the perfect job? Probably not. We're probably going to need to compromise. So let's say I get a job. It's my own schedule, financially rewarding, supportive coworkers. They're fabulous, but we're making bombs. You know, all of a sudden, remember I said one of those ideals will rise to the top. I don't think I could sacrifice the service-oriented. I don't think I could work at a place, no matter what money, no matter how great the co-workers, the flexible, if we're making bombs, right? But I might be able to give up the financially rewarding. I don't think I could give up my own <laughs> schedule, but we'd have to work on that. Um, I might be able to give up supportive co-workers, but I, I, it, has to, it would have to be service-oriented. But remember, and this I come with counseling with a lot of people, we want to be service-oriented. It came up in a bunch of your ideals and probably ones that didn't even get mentioned, but we can be service-oriented in even the most mundane daily job. Because why? We can bring our light and our love, our lack of judgment, our acceptance. We can bring our ideals into any situation, as mundane as it can be. I can be, I don't know, you know, um, I can't, th I can't think of what, I'm not being insulting, but let's say our garbage collector, you know, he's coming along and he's driving his truck and him, he may think I'm in a mundane job, you know, but if he or she, don't want to be sexist, if he or she is, is collecting that garbage with love and with positive intentions and is being friendly to the people on the route, friendly with the coworkers, what a service. What a service. So let's not get tied up in that in order to be service oriented, we have to be in a new agey job or we have to work at the ARE, although bless all of you that work here. Okay, so 
<laughs> so choices become easy again when you imagine the highest form. So now, Casey, remember we said very religious, read the Bible a million times, well, not a million, but for every year of his life. His ultimate ideal is going to be Jesus. But one of the things that I really respect about Casey, and, and I found this in a lot of the readings, because um, I've been doing research for other things, is he was like, he, he, you didn't have to be his faith. You didn't have to be his beliefs. He could find a way to communicate to you that you did not feel he couldn't relate to your situation. And so instead of just saying, oh, this is Jesus is the ultimate and, and follow, you know, do what Jesus did, which he did say, but, but he would also say, he would also use this term oneness consciousness, Christ consciousness. He didn't limit it. And so when we look at the ideal ideal, the ultimate ideal, we're going to use the term oneness consciousness, which basically is understanding we're all one. We're all one with God. He even says it in, and you can check me on this, on 5749's reading, number 14, he said, the awareness within each soul imprinted in pattern on the mind and waiting to be awakened by the will of the soul's oneness with God, the most important being of the soul's oneness with God. When we understand that, we are in oneness consciousness and then we will automatically have what he called the fruits of the, of, of, uh, the spirit, which is love, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, hope, peace. There's a few others. I picked the top ones, the ones he mentioned the most, I think. And then here again are the quotes where, where he said it, if you want to check on me. So this is where I picked kindness out of. I picked it because it was one of the fruits of the Spirit, and I thought, you know, I'm not going to pretend to try to be Jesus or pretend to live in oneness consciousness because I've got a couple bent legs, let me tell you. <laughs> I got a little crispy in the oven. Um, so, uh, I, but I can do kindness. I'm going to work on that one. So let's, now we've picked an ideal. Maybe you're going to pick an ideal out of your list. This is the one thing I would say is be careful on the ideal you pick because the universe will say, oh, you decided to work with patience. God bless you. We are going to give you a backup on Route 64. You're going to be in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and then you're going to go to the grocery store, and you're going to be behind the woman with 700 coupons and a checkbook, and let's see how you do with those patients. Don't pick patience until you've gotten some of these others under your belt, like kindness. <laughs> because what you seek also seeks you, right? So, yeah, the spirit will say, oh, okay, let's, let's see how you do with that one. So now, this is where we say, how do we get practical? And this is where we're going to do, we're going to break up into groups again but this is where we're going to get practical. I'm going to give you some concepts, and then we're going to break into groups, and we're actually going to do it. So what we have said is that once you have your spiritual ideal, remember we have spirit is the mind, uh, spirit is life, mind is the builder, physical is the result. First we have our spiritual ideal. I'm picking kindness. Then we need to know what mental attitude do we need to imprint kindness into our life? What headspace, what cookie cutter do we need, right? What mental attitude do we need? And mental attitudes we're going to talk about very often are the same as similar to ideals. And then, whoops, it's not what I meant to do. And what action are you going to take in the world? Because it's wonderful to say, oh, yes, I'm so kind. Get out of my way, you SOB. You know, you're in my way, right? What action are you going to take? How are you going to walk your talk, not just talk your talk? So we have spiritual idea, mental attitude. Come on. There we go. So I like to think of it as my mantra. So let's say I'm dealing with a situation where somebody cut me off in traffic and I am trying to be kind. I'm trying to be kind to myself because who suffers from somebody cutting me off in traffic? I suffer because I am swearing and aggravated with that person for the next 50 miles. You know, it happened in one second and I punish, punish myself for an hour, right? So I use a mantra and I'll say, let it go, 
let it go, let it go. So when I'm practicing kindness, very often my headspace is let it go, let it go, let it go, right? But sometimes it'll seem like a sub-ideal, and when we start working on this, um, uh, you'll understand that a little bit more. But then, so I'm thinking, what mindset do I need? But then we have to take action. Now, be specific as possible. So let's say we heard self-care over here and over there, I think. How often are you going to go out and be with other like-minded people so that you don't feel alienated? How often are you going to do that? How long are you going to stay at the gym? How many times a week? And you're not going to be unrealistic, but we're going to be very specific. So we say, what actions? What actions will help me reverse? So let's say if I'm working on self-judgment or judgment, right? It could be self or outwards. Maybe I'm going to be more mindful. Maybe my mindset is going to be more mindful. Well, maybe I'm going to put an app on my, on my um, phone that, my phone this is my watch, but it's a phone too. I put my, on my watch that's going to say, I have one on here. It tells me to breathe. Right, so every time it tells me to breathe, it's kind of funny, it knocks on my wrist, it goes, breathe. So every time it tells me to breathe, I'm going to say, where's my headspace? Am I judging myself? How am I bringing mindfulness? I'm gonna, so my action is putting an app on that's going to hit me in the wrist and tell me to breathe a couple times a day. Now, also, how am I going to take care of myself? Remember I told you a funny, I'd have a funny story. So I don't know if any of you have been to Back Bay Gourmet. Their food is fabulous. Their service, not so much. It takes forever. But it's because they make everything fresh, and it's absolutely worth the wait. But don't go there if you're hungry, right? So my husband and I go, and I know I'm hungry, and I'm really hungry, and I'm overweight. You do not want an overweight woman hungry, right? You know, and who's trying to be kind, anyway. So I, I say to the woman, I didn't want to say, your service really stinks, and so can I have some bread while I wait? <laughs> so I just said, can I have some bread while I wait? And she goes, wow, you're going to have to pay for that. I said, that's okay. Just bring me some bread. Because I'm really hungry. Okay. Okay. So she orders bread along with my salad. You know, kind of nice balance when you're on Weight Watchers. So off she goes, and now I know she has other people to take care of, but she didn't have that many other peoples to take care of. And I'm watching her talking with the waitresses. I'm watching her every once in a while she'd go help a table. And she's walking by me, and like now I am really starved. I, and Miss Kindness went out the window because I'm hungry, and she walks by and I go, where is my bread? And she looks at me. <laughs> you know, she's like, well, I'm warming your butter in my hand right now. And I felt like saying, I'm on Weight Watchers, I don't eat butter. But <laughs> I didn't because I was trying to be kind. I was really struggling because I was hungry. So what's the lesson? Is it the waitress's problem? No, it's my problem. What attitude do I want to take? But what do I need to do? What ways can I take care of myself? I now carry a protein bar in my pocketbook. Because if I'm that hungry that I'm going to scream at a waitress for not bringing my bread, maybe I should just have a bite or two of my protein bar and, like, buck it up, you know? <laughs> so we do, whether it's getting enough sleep, doing some meditation, eating well, exercising, having fun. How many of us are caregivers? I'm not one right now, thank goodness, but I went through a time where I was a caregiver, and one of the most important things I did was three times a week I went to the gym. At the time, it was fun. Not so much now. But at the time, it was my fun. It was my getting out, you know? I had to do that so that I could be the best caregiver. I could be as compassionate as I needed to be. So sometimes, we need to go have fun. And we saw that in that self-care, in that being with other like, I don't want to point, being with the other like-minded people. Right? Sometimes we need to have fun. So this is my example. Now realize I'm making this up so I can make it as a, much of a heartstring story as I want. This is how I'm going to say I put kindness into work. So in my pretend story, I work in one of those cubicle offices, and the lady next to me, Sally, is a cat lady. Now I had to use a cat lady because I'm a cat lady, and I wanted to use this cute little kitty cat. So it has to be a cat story. So if you're a cat lady, pardon me. 
I love cats. So anyway, so Sally is next to me, and she has pictures of Mimi all over. And she has a picture of her and her mother, but then she has pictures of Mimi all in over, and she never talks about anything but Mimi. And so people at work make fun of her, right? And people avoid her because if you are nice to Sally, you're going to get stuck with a 15-minute Mimi story about how Mimi, you know, found a new mouse or something, you know, uh, another Mimi story. So I thought, what cookie cutter, what headspace, what mental attitude do I need to bring kindness into my interaction with Sally? Well, patience. Definitely need patience because she starts a Mimi story, I want to run the other way. Understanding. Maybe if I understood Sally better, I could be more kind to Sally, right? Maybe understanding. And non judgment. I got to stop judging the cat lady, right? Yeah, it's just got to stop because it's not, who's it hurting? Who's going to have to look at that in their life review? Not Sally. Sally's going to be a happy little kitty cat in her next life, right? So I need, I need, I need non-judgment. So now what physical actions am I going to take? Well, patience. I'm going to listen to a cat story. Remember, we're also going to be kind to ourselves. This is not an unlimited invitation to listening to Mimi stories. I'm going to listen to a um, cat story without interrupting. I'm going to practice patience and be kind. I'm going to listen to one story. Understanding. I'm going to invite Sally to sit with me at lunch and just find out what her life's like. Everybody avoids her. Nobody even knows, you know, is she married? Is she not married? Does she have kids? You know, nobody knows anything. And then non judgment. I'm not going to engage in gossip. So this is how it goes. I listen to the cat story and I see all my coworkers going, <laughs> she's stuck while I listen to a cat story. And I just ignore them. Then we go to lunch and she tells me that. She spent her life taking care of her mother. She was a caregiver. She took care of her mother her whole life, and when on her mother's deathbed, remember I can make this story as sad as I want, on the mother's deathbed, she says to her daughter, take care of Mimi the way you've taken care of me. I understand now. Now, Mimi is mom. The woman doesn't have a life because she spent her life taking care of, and I have, I have friends, I know people like this, so it's, it's not a judgment. It's just it happens, and, and I teach in Japan. It happens more there than it does in America, but then they, so they spent, she spent her whole life taking care of her mother. Now she's transposed that caregiving to the cat. Now I understand. Now I can be kind because I recognize I don't have to fix her. Remember, ideals are not to fix a problem. They're to help us bring the energy or the vibration into a situation that we want to bring. I want to bring kindness into my actions with, with uh, Sally. Now I can because I understand. Now, maybe I might want to invite her to the movies next time I go. You know, give her an option to get out a little bit, have something to talk about besides the cat. But it's not my job to fix her. By being kind does not mean I'm fixing her. So then non-judgment, I'm around the Keurig. We don't have water coolers anymore, right? We have Keurigs. I'm around the Keurig, and everybody's going, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you got stuck with another Mimi story. And I'm going to say, you know, I understand Sally a lot better now. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to engage in the gossip. I'm not going to tell them what I found out. Because when someone's in gossip mode, that is just going to create more gossip. If someone really wanted to understand Sally, they wouldn't be coming to me in gossip mode. So I'm not going to explain to them what I learned. If they come to me and say, hey, how can you be nice to Sally now? I can say I understand her and this is why. Because then they'd be coming to me in a different mode, right? So I'm not going not to continue that. So I want to be kind at work with Sally. I practice patience, understanding, and non-judgment. Am I perfect with it? No, because I'm telling somebody else the story, and I may, I may not be as good at it. I'm going to listen without interrupting. I'm going to invite Sally to sit with me for lunch, and I'm not going to engage in gossip. So I have a plan. So now, I'm sure, and this is your page two in your notes, I'm sure or I would hope, after listening to me for an hour, I would hope you can say to yourself, gosh, I have a place in my life where I would like to put ideals. Remember, ideals don't solve problems. Ideals help you to bring the vibration that you want to bring, the energy you want to bring to a situation. So is there an area in your life 
and just, I gave you more space, but we're just going to do one today. Is there an area in your life that you think you would like to practice an ideal, like I practiced at work, right, with Sally? What ideal might be helpful to practice? And because uh, people don't uh, do well under pressure at the bottom of your page, you'll see a whole list of ideals for you to choose from. It is not uh, an, a, a complete list by any means. And then what mental attitude, and you'll notice a lot, my mental attitudes were also ideals. And so we can call them mental attitudes or we can, we can take from the ideals. And then what am I going to do? List one or two things. So I want you to just by yourself, and if you're at home, um, you, can, uh, you don't need the notes because it just looks like this. <laughs> Take a minute and say, what area in my life, what ideal, what mental or physical, my uh, mental headspace, and what action can I take? And then take a couple minutes, but then we're going to get into groups, and we're going to help each other. Okay? We're going to get into groups, and we're going to help each other, and, and um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll meet back. Okay? So just take a couple minutes, and then um, I'll say, you know, maybe four or five minutes to get into your groups. You can get into the same group or you can join a different group if you want a different group. So just take a couple minutes. What area in your life, what ideal you'd like to practice. And remember, ideals don't solve problems. They help you to be the best when you are dealing with a situation. It doesn't have to be a problem. It can be, uh, you know, I, I want to go into work. I love my work and I want to bring an ideal into it. You know, it doesn't have to be a problem. We'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll get so that you have something to go into the group with. And don't worry if you say, I have no idea, then maybe you're going to be the one that helps someone else. On the bottom of your sheet, there's also areas in life. I kind of gave you some starting hints in case you want, in case you needed them. And don't worry if you're kind of dumbfounded. That's why we do the group, and then we're going to talk about it afterwards. So remember, a mental is kind of the headset, the mind mantra, the mindset. Where does our head need to be in order to actualize that, that ideal? And then physical is an action. So why don't we break into groups when you feel like you've got you know, enough to start with. Break into I groups and then help each other help each other. Because what I find is a lot of times it's we're too close to a problem. We're too close to a situation. And someone will say, gosh, I know I want to be more kind with my mother-in-law. You know, what headspace can I be in? You know, or I want to, I want to be better with self-care. What headspace do I need to be? I'm so self-judging. What headspace do I need to be in to be less judgmental? So get into groups. See if you can help. And Kevin, I know I won't be on the screen but I'm going to go walk around and help people. Okay? All right, great. So <laughs> I see, come on down. Okay, uh, I love being not attached. Okay.
Okay, Kevin. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Kevin's on it. <laughs> okay, so let me get your attention again. For those that are on the uh, live stream, we're back. And for those in the audience, we're back. I have to say, you guys did really, really well. Really, really well. And um, I, I, do you mind if I use yours as an example, the one with the blue cup that we just talked? Okay. So what was the area of your life? Um, it was lifestyle. So lifestyle. So her area of life was lifestyle. And what ideal did you pick? Uh, cooperation. Cooperation. So we have the ideal of cooperation. So in her lifestyle, she needs to cooperate kind of, because so we do have to cooperate with others, right? And when we, let me tell you a, you ready for another story? So, I am the return queen. My thing is, if I am not, if I buy it and I don't need it, I'm going to return it, right? Okay, there's other return queens in the place. So, what better ideal to go forth with than cooperation. <coughs> so I took these clothes back to Kohl's, and I knew I bought them there, but I didn't have a receipt. I don't even know if all the labels were on them. I didn't wear them, you know, but sometimes you go to, you pull the label off, then you put it on, you look in the mirror and say, ugh, you know, it's just not the same. Look, I think they have trick mirrors at Kohl's that make you look slender in everything. <laughs> so I bring these things back to to um, to Coles, and I want cooperation. I'm I am my ideal is cooperation. I give the same talk when I teach Hermetic philosophy about vibration. Casey teaches us to be aware of our vibration because our vibration will affect others. That's how healing and prayer work is the vibration, right? So what about if we use these ideals? Remember we said it's kind of the vibration we bring into a situation. So you go into Kohl's with your, your bag full of things you want to return, you don't ever receipt. have the ideal of cooperation. What mental attitude do I have to have for cooperation, flexibility? You give me a, maybe I'll get my money back, probably not, I don't ever receipt. I wouldn't expect that, I'm cooperative, just give me a gift card, right? So when we have cooperation, it's important because then we are flexible. So if we're doing cooperation, one of our mental attitudes may be flexibility. Now, what did we pick for, for your mental attitude? Uh, acceptance. acceptance. So in order to be cooperative, we have to accept that it's not the way we necessarily want it. If, you've, if any of you have ever cleaned out a family home, you know about cooperation. Just went through it. I have to say our family got an A plus so far. So we're going to use acceptance. So what did we decide might be a good physical thing to do for acceptance? A gratitude journal. I will tell you, I've told that for a few people, I recommend a gratitude journal. It's one of the actions that fit almost every, <laughs> everyone. Because if you're grateful, you can be anything, right? You know? So a gratitude journal might be a physical thing to do. Look into say, what's the bigger picture? So maybe even uh, uh, in order to, to, to be cooperative, uh, and to, to be able to, to, to do that with your mental attitude, we're going to make a gratitude journal. There's, is, can anybody else think of something else? Now remind me, my brain went blank. What was the mental attitude? Acceptance, right? Okay. So what might be another physical thing that she could do to help her to have cooperation, acceptance? What might be something she could do? Any ideas? Take a deep breath. Breathe. Okay. Breathe, reassess, maybe mindfulness exercise. Maybe mindfulness exercise. Maybe even doing a little yoga. If we could practice flexibility in our body, maybe we could bring that into our mind. I know I went from flexibility to acceptance. I would say that that would be uh, flexibility is another mental. Any other thoughts about what she might be able to do to bring cooperation and flexibility? Mm 
walk away. Walk away. I don't care if it's, oh, I have to go use the ladies' room. Nobody knows what you're doing in there, right? You know, <laughs> walk away. The other thing, I mean, and that's, that's another really good one. Sometimes we just need to walk away, right? Maybe understanding might be another mental attitude that will help you because if you understood the people you had to cooperate with or the lifestyle situation that you have to cooperate, if you had a better understanding of it, maybe it would help you to cooperate with it better, right? So did people find this helpful? I saw, I saw tears, I saw laughter, I saw a little bit of everything. So now, just to summarize, Ideals are a guiding pattern, or as Peter Woodbury insisted, I put in here, a northern star. It's <laughs> ideals are a northern star. I love Peter. Um, you bring what you, you become what you dwell upon. So what we're doing with this is we are being, we are using the ideal and dwelling upon it mentally as our cookie cutter. We are taking the potentiality that we are given uh, spirit, and we are using our, ide our ideal as the cookie cutter, mental, so that we have that result. But we don't expect to have it perfect. We're going to have a bent leg or we're going to be a little crispy or a little underdone. That's life. That's life. Your ideals will change. Be specific in your, sp in your physical, what your action you're going to take. Now, here it says, let's try it for three months. Forget three months. Let's try it for three hours, all right? So from noon to three, I want you to practice your ideal. Just three hours. There's magic in the number three. Three hours. And then if you find, wow, I'm liking this, then try it for three days, then three weeks. And then you get three months. I want you to come back and tell me all about it. <laughs> um, try it for three hours and just see what comes out your mouth. Code it or surround it by your ideal what's going through your mind, check it against your ideal. Any questions? Okay, well, before you go, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. Oh, no, before we do the before you go, I just want to tell you about some resources. Now, a lot of this, this book used to be available this, uh, it's um, Edgar Casey's Ideal Workbook. It used to be available for sale, but is now out of print. But if you're a member, for the low price of, ladies in the back, membership, it's cheap. It's, it's reasonable. Nothing, you don't say cheap. Huh? Thir 39 for the digital membership. Anyway, it's available free. You'd pay that for the two books, right? Um, and it's a workbook that Kevin Tedeschi put together on how to figure your ideals. I did some of it. I didn't do it all, but I did some of it. And you can print it out or you can do it online. Then there's also, if you're interested in ideals, there is a circulating file on ideals. Now, you know what I found out? You can take these out of the library. You don't have to pay for them. But if you're a member, it's half price. Okay. The best book... Um, the best book that has come out of the Casey writings lately, I feel, I also really like his dream book, Kevin Tedeschi's dream book, but is Contemporary Casey. The one thing that I hear from many people and that I'm struggling with myself because when you research, you have to read the actual readings, is trying to figure out, trying to translate from Bible English to contemporary English. And Kevin and uh, Henry Reed have done so. And so this covers many of the, from the, um, from the um, God Exploration Group, um, covers a lot. Then if you haven't read um, any of Edgar Cayce's biographies, I just was almost in tears in love with the, this man. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't get to meet him. I was so disappointed. It was kind of like Joseph Campbell. I felt the same thing. I realized he was gone after I discovered him. Um, but this is a fabulous read, and it gives you also a lot of his spiritual philosophy. There is a river, and it is free if you join membership today. Um, I'm only joking with the membership push. Okay, so although it's a good thing. 
And then the other ones here, there are four books in the library uh, uh, available for sale today that are actually mine and my husband's. Soul Soothers and Grow Your Spiritual Business are mine. A Voyage of Purpose and A Voice as Old as Time are my husband's. Um, Dave's is uh, Voyage of Purpose talks about his near-death experience, and he will be telling that at the forum in January this month. So if you're interested in the near-death experience, um, I hope you'll join us on uh, the 28th, I think it is but whenever the forum is. But if you'd like, I will be here for a couple, uh, for a little bit cleaning up and chatting with my buddies over there, and I'm happy to sign those, any of those. Uh, and Dave's here also, he can sign those books. 25th, thank you. At 7 p.m., and that's free too. All right, well, sure there's no other questions? Thank you so much for being a part of Conscious Community Service. And remember, it's moving to Tuesday night, or Tuesday morning. Thank you. <laughs>